Hello folks, thanks for joining me once more. Um, well, it's been a while since the last one and um, the video I had planned to do today I can't do because it would have required two hands and unfortunately um, I uh, dislocated one of my fingers rather badly so I had to uh, quickly reassess the situation and uh, do a video that only requires excuse me, the one hand. So today I'll um, bring you up to date on what I've been reading um, for the past two or three weeks. So these days I don't get through books very quickly so I've only managed a couple. Um, now I've been, as I've been, if, since I finished the Hugo Award Winners Project, I've been trying to pick authors that um, I've not read. You know, I've probably read a lot of their short stories, but um, never read any of their actual novels. So uh, today I've been reading um, two books, as I say. Um, Rite of Passage by Alexei Panshin and Of Men and Monsters by William Ten. So we'll kick off with um, the Rite of Passage, which um, I read first. Um, incidentally, that particular edition, just out of interest, the side issue, is a, is a proper first printing, an actual first printing, because the paperback uh, actually came out before the hardback. Um, this was quite common with these ace Science fiction, special, science fiction special editions, um, and then a lot of them were were actual first printings. Um, now, this is um, a book told from the perspective. It's a first person uh, narrative, and it's told from the perspective of a um, a twelve year old girl. Um, living on a spaceship. Her name's Mia Havero. Um, now the the Earth, you know, I'm not <laughs> I'm not normally uh, able to sort of um, get into the minds of, uh, of of the protagonists that are twelve year old girls. You know, I'm not able to empathise with them. Um, so this one was a tricky read for me. But anyway, the, uh, Mia Havro is um, is living on this uh, spaceship, and the reason they're living on on it is because the Earth has um, become uninhabitable, and um, all the people on there they just um, they just fly about between colonies, and they exchange um, their technology for things that the colonists grow and what have you that they can't do aboard the ship. Um, but the, um, the swap is a bit one-sided because they only give very small amounts of technology uh, to the people. And so they basically remain ignorant, if you like. Now, um, the first the first two-thirds of the book uh, covers Mia's day to day, um, get, uh, you get to know her friends, um, her schooling and uh, what um, what she does in her spare time. Um, and then the final third of the book um, is, as the title says, her rite of passage. Now, her rite of passage involves um, going down to one of the colony planets and existing on on her own for one month. Um, the mortality rate for the kids when they're 14, by the way, I should have said when they reach 14 years of age, the mortality of these kids is uh, quite high. Uh, so they, they have to undergo um, certain survival courses to try and help them. Uh, and all that's described, you know, in the first half of the book. Uh, the last third of the book is tells you what happens when Mia goes down to uh, the planet 
Um, I won't I won't tell you any more than that because anything past that would be spoilers whether she survives or not blah blah um, or how you know things go if you like um, but that, that's the basic plot of the book I mean there is, there is a little bit more to it than that but that's the basic plot without um, boring you for the next half an hour um, right now as usual I'll, I'll give you my impressions uh, of the book um, it's not a review as I've always said it's just a few of my impressions um, now I I must admit I, I've reassessed this book since I read it I think I think I understand now more what the author was trying to do but when I, when I was reading it I was getting a little bit edgy and bored and um, just sort of kept plugging away really um, until the, the last third of the book um, which uh, which involved Mia's rite of passage uh, that, that got quite interesting but um, it was one of those uneven books that it annoys me you know because it's it's quite an interesting book overall but it's just that the first half two thirds was a bit um, a bit dry, a bit pedestrian, if you like, uh, describing the day to day on this ship. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, overall, it, it it wasn't a bad book, but it wasn't you know it wasn't a book that excited me greatly. As I say, I, I you, you always have trouble as, as a seventy five year old guy. You know, I try to identify with a twelve year old girl, <coughs> or twelve through to fourteen. Uh, is not the easiest thing in the world so uh, there were a few issues there um, now on a on my usual scale of of one to ten with five being average um, I'd give it a six you know it sort of kind of dabbles in that five average area but I think because it, it redeemed itself over the past the last third of the book um, I think I'll hit it with um, with a six. Okay, so that was right of passage. Now, William Ten of Men and Monsters. Um, you might any of you who read contemporary science fiction, or or even some of you who still stick with vintage stuff, might be excused for not knowing this guy. And there's probably a good reason for that because this is the one and only full-length novel that he wrote. Uh, he did a few novellas and a lot of short stories, um, but this was his only novel. Um, just as a point of interest again, this is another uh, proper first edition. Uh, it came before the hardback. And... Um, it's it's similar in, in in many ways to uh, to write a passage, in as much as um, it involves a write a passage. Um, now, this one, the plot of this one is is fairly straightforward. Again, it's um, basically the Earth's been conquered by these monster aliens. Massive they are. And um, the remaining humans, I think at the start of the book, if I remember correctly, they say there's 128 humans left. And they subsist um, as kind of vermin as far as the monster aliens are concerned. They subsist in their, the tunnels of the, of the houses that they've made. Um, and th there are... There are three factions um, uh, involved. Um, the ones that uh, I, I can't remember. It's a, while si it's a while since I finished it. But um, anyway, there, there are three factions. I think, um, I don't know whether it's humanity and a couple of others. But anyway, the, there's, there's the, um, the basic humanity. Then there's these other guys who are the uh, people who don't seem to know what they're doing half the time. And then there's the, the Aaron people who who are um, sort of like the, the the more technically advanced, if you like. 
and the, our hero is um, um, protagonist is Eric, um, who goes on this rite of passage. He has to go and steal something meaningful from the monsters, and he goes into this large area where all the monsters' furniture and everything is huge. You know, it's impossible to to to, to scale scale up uh, to the top. And so. Uh, anyway, he finds something and takes it back. And when he gets back, he finds that there's been some sort of conflict uh, amongst his people and he's actually regarded as an outlaw. So he has to escape. Um, and eventually uh, he's captured by the monsters um, and they stick him in this plastic uh, prison. Uh, you can see out of because it's plastic and um, you know there's, there's a lot there's a lot happens in there but it's fairly mundane stuff people getting you know dissected for for, for, for experimental purposes by the monsters <coughs> excuse me and uh, anyway eventually Eric uh, comes across this girl who uh, he, he falls in love with and eventually marries and it turns out that um, she is she is a, a, a member of the um, the Aaron people and it turns out that the Aaron people have got some kind of plot to um, escape the monsters I won't I won't go any further than that because it will be it'll be giving the end in a way but I mean that's the basic premise um, Again, there is a lot more to it than that. Obviously, it's a you know it's an average sized book, so there's more going on. But that's that, that's the, the the bullet points anyway, if you like. Um, now, as I say, I, I think I've read the odd short story by this guy. Um, I don't know. It was it was because all the action takes place in these tunnels. Uh, and, and, and sort of open spaces within the tunnels uh, where the, the humans live. Uh, the book has this claustrophobic feel about it. Um, and it's not, it's not that interesting, to be honest. Um, you know, the idea of the earth being invaded is, you know, <laughs> it's an old staple. Um, you know, uh, people hanging out in places where hopefully they can't be found. You know, it's all going back to the 1940s. Um, it's, it's told in a certain uh, stylish manner, um, with a bit, of, you know, quite a bit of humour. Um, but overall, I, I can't say that I, I really enjoyed it, although it's one of those books that um, I didn't enjoy, but I didn't hate either. Um, so... Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's not much more I can say really other than it was um, average. So I'm going to have to put it in that, um, into that bracket that I don't normally put books in because I either like them or loathe them. So, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10 where 5 is average, I would, it's another one, uh, I think it's only the second book I've ever put into that uh, average category so I'll give it a five um, so yeah that was my my reads of the past two or three weeks um, it's strange that they, they, they both dealt you know with a similar subject this rite of passage um, and uh, I would have liked something uh, maybe a bit a bit more diverse shall we say Okay, folks, so that's all I have to say to you today. Um, if, I, uh, if I become more dexterous, uh, is that a word, dexterous? Or if I regain my dexterity um, by the time I do my next video, I've got something a bit uh, different to uh, books and science fiction to show you. But anyway, in the meantime, thank you very much for turning up, uh, listening to me babbling on as usual. Um, thank you for subscribing and uh, commenting and all the usual things. And uh, I will see you hopefully very shortly. Bye bye now.